corresponding cost that you're looking at that you've incurred is the financials part of it so if in case or let's let's take this as an example I'm sure you've uh, you've seen you've you must have seen this um, Microsoft projects right um, you know during your ERP implementations you've you've seen the Microsoft projects now, what do we have in Microsoft projects it has a start date an end date then we have the dates for each of milestones all the milestones listed and under each of these milestones we have this sub task right when we say first um, requirement gathering then we have requirement and requirement gathering we subdivide that um, we um, um, this is purely from the EBIS uh, a regular EBIS implementation for a client um, since we are all familiar with that I'm, I'm trying to take that example so when we say requirement gathering we have the GL AP AR fixed assets cash management so each of these modules and we have uh, you know one or uh, two people engaged for each of these who are actually talking to the customers the business users trying to get the requirements you hit the toll gate that is complete then you move into the design phase where each of these persons who have spoken collect their understanding of the modules put them into a document and then try to prepare a solution for it and that that is once we are done with that we are hitting the next toll gate so all this is uh, and then we also have so and then we have uh, you know writing or delivering all the functional and design documents the BR hundreds so we write each of these specific points in the Microsoft projects don't we so when we write these things in Microsoft projects what we're trying to do is we're just trying to put a timeline and then see if it is actually complete this is just the uh, structure where you're not considering any of the financial part of it so that is given to you as um, a project manager or a project lead and a project lead let, let, let me not say or a project manager and the, and the lead and then the module leads so you are aiming at the end date which is given to you in a Microsoft project plan but the project manager himself is also aware of the billing rates right and the project manager he or she is also um, at the end of the day he, he or she needs to give an account of the uh, number of uh, resources right from the human resources to the laptops and any other uh, hardware software that we have with we need in addition to it in case you need some uh, data loaders you know you need a professional license for it then you need to spend some money on it all those things have to be collected separately but as a module lead um, say for GL I am concentrating just on the task and the subtask under that my uh, deliverable docs requirements my deliverable docs designs my deliverable docs functional uh, spec docs BR hundreds so all this is task uh, all these tasks are under or I've tasked them under Microsoft projects I'm not really worried about the financial part of it so this is equivalent to your project execution management or when I'm taking just these but as a project manager I need to have I need to be under the control 
um, or I need to be sitting on top and control the budget uh, that I am I, I have been given um, every time you log in eight hours so you've been logging eight hours continuously for the last 50 days now that's about uh, 50 uh, man days so that that is about 400 hours correct so when I say 400 hours did I actually factor in 400 hours or did I take 300 hours so you keep entering the timesheets you you code in your timesheets but the at the end of you uh, know 50 days you've done it and every week you're submitting um, once you've crossed the 400 limit which is which was actually allocated under the main project plan you've hit the threshold and you've crossed it now that needs to be tracked somewhere so that is coming from uh, or that is coming into the project cost or the financials and I need to keep as a project manager I need to keep a close watch on this so these two I can have them go hand in hand or I can just have um, assuming that I am not the one who's driving or um, who's driving the budget rather I'm being driven by um, the project owner in this case an engagement manager from our end or an account manager who is um, responsible for the budget he says that you worry about the execution I'm not uh, going to stop you from taking any decision for the execution but I want uh, to ensure that you are done within you know 100 million or 10 million if this is what he or she fixes and you keep sending in your timesheets the moment I reach a threshold of 50 million I'll alert you that you've reached 50 million and you need to take care of certain costs or the time uh, it's just a reminder so these things my scope is now reduced just to the execution and somebody else is taking care of the financials so I can use project management or the PPM just for the execution wherein I'm just I'm looking only at the ta execution of the task that is the project execution management and the financial management as I already said that when the financial terms come into uh, picture or when we are trying to measure these these come under the financial project management you will have what you're looking at is two different instances of the same project under the PPM head so execution will have a project of its own under the project execution management and when you also term it as a financial project you're considering all the tasks and you're calculating you're capturing all the tasks under that head as well so did, did that uh, help you understand the uh, difference there Yep. Okay. All right. I, since it's uh, you know day one, and we're trying to go through the basics, right? So t up until that point, we'll try to take as much time as we can and um, make sure that these foundations are clear, rather than trying to hurry up and then uh, it's not really going to help uh, both you and me, right? So I, I any. Uh, questions around that uh, let me know we can try and take a little detour here and there and then uh, drive back into the topic all right so with that understanding we are um, at least I, I, I assume that we are all set to take off from here um, though we have not covered these building blocks we'll be looking at them we'll be looking at these building blocks but this slide helps us to understand just the projects you know the projects portfolio management um, from bigger picture you know how it is divided and 
what actually happens in each of these modules. Uh, we've tried and uh, tried to understand them, uh, these modules in a little more uh, engaging uh, approach. So. Thank you.